All right, so this one we're going to look for uh, error bounds using Simpson's rule. Uh, for Simpson's rule, so suppose that the fourth derivative of f of x is less than or equal to k, where x is between a and b. If e sub s is the error involved in using Simpson's rule, then the error the e sub s is less than or the absolute value e sub s is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 times n to the fourth. So what we're going to use this uh, use this to do is we're going to figure we're going to solve for n. They're going to we're going to have problems where it says okay we want the error to be within this number say like 0 0.0001 okay well what does n need to be that's the examples that we're going to work uh, I've got three different examples each example is going to have its own video so go ahead and check those check them all out because they'll each be different functions and uh, different ways to find k k's k can be the toughest thing to find Okay, so check them out. All right, so let's look at example three. Uh, it says, how large should we take n in order to guarantee that the Simpson's rule approximation for the integral e to the x squared dx from 0 to 1 is accurate to within point zero 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 one. All right, so, and I'll tell you right now, the... The worst part of this problem is going to be finding the derivatives. Uh, so remember, Simpson's rule, we've got this is less than or equal to k times b minus a to the fifth over 180 n to the fourth. And then we also have the fourth derivative of f of x is less than or equal to k. So to figure out what n is, we need to know k, b, and a. And then we want all of this to be less than or equal to the point zero, 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 1. So a and b, well, that's easy. That's 0 and 1. Okay. k is what we got to find. Now, sometimes k, that can be the worst part to find. Okay. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's it can get difficult so let's see how this one goes all right so we need the fourth derivative so we've got f of x is equal to e to the x squared and so the first derivative is well remember that's e to the x squared times the derivative of the exponent which is 2x e to the x squared Right, so that, that one wasn't bad. Now let's find the second derivative. Well, for the second derivative, we've got to use what? The product rule. So it's the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. So the derivative of the first function, that's 2 times the second function plus the derivative of the second function, so that's e to the x squared times the derivative of the exponent. Okay, so this is the derivative of the second function times the first function. And so we get f double prime of x is equal to 2e to the x squared plus 4x squared e to the x squared. Alright, so that's the second derivative. Now let's find the third derivative. So the third derivative, well, take the derivative of each term. So that's going to be 2e to the x squared times the derivative of the exponent, so times 2x plus, and now the derivative of this term, I've got to use the product rule. So the derivative of the first function, that's 8x times the second function, okay, plus the derivative of the second function, which is e to the x squared, 
times the derivative of the exponent times the first function times 4x squared. And so this is going to be 4x e to the x squared plus 8x e to the x squared plus that's going to be 8x cubed plus e to the x I'm sorry not plus times e to the x squared. Alright so well this is going to be nice see here we got like terms we can combine those 4, and four plus 8 is 12 plus 8x cubed e to the x squared. So there's the third derivative and now for the fourth derivative okay, so we got derivative of this, derivative of this, that's going to be the product rule on everything so let's do the product rule here so derivative of the first function that's 12 e to the x squared plus the derivative of the second function e to the x squared times 2x times the first function times 12x okay, plus and then here the derivative of the first function 8 I'm sorry 24x squared times the second function e to the x squared plus the derivative of the second function e to the x squared times 2x times the first function 8x cubed. Alright. Now I'm not going to go through just to save some time. I'm not going to go through and do all this right here. Let's let's go ahead and write down this is equal to because I think you can multiply some of this out and combine some like terms and you'll end up with 12e to the x squared plus 48x squared e to the x squared plus 16x to the fourth e to the x squared and then what I'm gonna do now I mean you don't really have to do this but I'll say this a lot of times when you have that common factor of e there it's gonna make it easier if you will just factor everything out or I'm sorry factor out that e okay all right this will make it easier for us to uh, figure out what k is going to be okay because see now we got to figure out k so remember the f absolute value of the fourth derivative is less than or equal to k so now I'm going to come here and I've got the absolute value of the fourth derivative of x is equal to this that's e to the x squared times 12 plus 48x squared plus 16x to the fourth. Okay, and that is where x is between 0 and 1. Alright, so we know that x is between 0 and 1. Alright, now you might be wondering or saying, well, hey, you didn't put this in absolute value. Well, I, c I can. I could have. But why didn't I? Well, because all the x values from 0 to 1, this thing is going to always be positive. It's never going to be negative. So I don't, I don't really need the absolute value. Okay. So now, let's look at this. This is less than or equal to right now remember I'm from 0 to 1 so let's just take a look at what this thing's doing as X is going from 0 to 1 you can graph it in some software and see but what what's going to give me the largest value okay because that's what I want I want the largest value out here to say this is going to be always going to be less than or equal to whatever this number is out here okay 
So, look, if as I'm going from 0 to 1, what's happening? The x values are getting larger and larger. Well, what do you think this term here is doing? Well, it's going to get larger and larger. Okay. Well, actually, let's take that back because if if we get, let's say, e to the 0.5, all right, say x is 0.5. So if we do e to the 0.5 squared, that gives us what? 1.28. Okay, so let's see. So I did where x is equal to 0.5 for this term. Okay, and now let's look at uh, e and let's let x be, let's say 0.75. So that's 0.75 squared. That actually gives me, okay, 1.75. All right, so we can see that as this thing, as x is increasing, well, it looks like e is increasing. Okay, so that's that tells us about this part of it. Well, now let's look at this part of it. Okay. Well, as x gets larger and larger, well, what's happening? Well, this thing is going to get larger and larger also. All right, we could say that this thing is what? Increasing as x goes from 0 to 1. All right, and, and what I want to show you here is I've got it graphed from 0 to 1. You can, you can barely see it, I had to zoom out so much. But here's what this function looks like, graphed from zero to one. See, from here to here is 20, so you can, you can imagine one's real close. It almost, it looks kind of like just a straight line. But you can see, you can hopefully, you can see that it's getting a little further away from the, from the y-axis here. But it, all it's doing is increasing, and it's, it's doing it pretty quick too. Okay, so that, that's, that's one way that, that you can look at it. Okay, so I know what's going to give me the largest value for this is when x is 1. Okay, now sometimes what you might have to do here is you may have to take the derivative of this thing and find your critical numbers and uh, find your absolute max and min on the interval 0 to 1. That, that might be an option on some of these. Okay, so let's plug the 1 in. So that's times 12 plus 48 times 1 squared plus 16 times 1 to the 4th. All right, and that is actually equal to, and when we do all of that, that is 76. This in here is 76. And this is e so that equals 76 e so what I've shown is that the absolute value of the fourth derivative is less than or equal to 76 e all right so we will take k to be 76 e and now we can solve this easily so now we gotta we plug everything into here and so I've got 76 e times and remember a is 0 uh, and b is 1 so that's 1 minus 0 to the fifth over 180 n to the fourth and we want this to be less than or equal to the point zero 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 one. So that's point zero 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 one. And then solving, well the n comes up here, the point zero 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 one comes down here. So that's seventy six E. This is just one. So that's one eighty times point zero 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 one less than or equal to n to the fourth. And so to solve for n 
I'll need to take the fourth root of both sides. That's 76e over 180 times 0 0.0001, less than or equal to n. And so n must be greater than or equal to the fourth root of this, which is 10.3. All right. So now you've got to be careful here because remember, this is Simpson's rule. And for Simpson's rule, n has to be even. So we can't go to 11. We have to go to 12. Because remember, this must be even. All right. So that was quite kind of a long video, but hopefully it helped. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.